Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast where the talk soon turns to Mr. Coyle's ear. It seems that it has yet to return from holiday, unlike its counterpart on the other side of his head. I have an ear. Have I've, you? I've returned with an ear. I came back with a thing. Did you? You've got an ear and I've got a thing. Yeah, I can't I, hear. Uh, can you not? On, on which one ear. side? And which, 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 which side is that? Left. Right, in my right ear. You can't hear in your right ear? Oh. Emma, will you test that? I'm Say just, something nice to him. No. So I, is, is it completely blotted out your ear? Yes. It's gone. Yeah. Have you been to see a medical man about this? Well, this last couple of weeks, I noticed that when I got up uh, for, out of bed in the morning, my I had a footer with my ear. Makes to, a change? To, 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 uh, <laughs> to, to get some hearing in it. You right, said, right. how do you <clears throat> shake it about? You put your left ear in, you put your left ear out. Well, as a matter of fact, now, I've, had, I've had similar trouble with an ear of mine for many years, and I haven't figured out yet what I have to do to make it hear. What do you do to make your ear well, hear? Well, this morning, though, uh, in, in the past, I, I, I jiggled it about, and the, and, the, and the hearing returned. But this morning when I shook it, this, I jiggled it <laughs> when I jiggled it this morning, <laughs> nothing happened. Well, you see, this is because you're getting, getting a wee bit old now. <laughs> There's many a man jiggling things in the morning and nothing happens. It comes down to old age. Uh, so do you jiggle your head or you, do you, No, do you... I can't jiggle my head because I've got uh, vertigo. Well, you see... And inner ear problems, you oh, see. You've got everything. Yeah. Well, how so do you jiggle, jiggle your ear without jiggling your head? Do you take your ear in your hand and, and jiggle... You pull oh, it jiggle up and it. down. I That's see what right. you mean, yeah. Yes. Are well, you yeah. doing it now? I have. I've been doing it this morning. I'm, I'm doing it now. Oh. Hear me doing it now. And it won't work. Nothing's happening. Emma, don't, Emma, don't look. The eating habits of our ancestors continue to fascinate Radio Ulster listeners, especially those who still have traces of lard in their bloodstream. Who remembers the chip shop owned by the big-nosed drummer from Liverpool? Everybody went to Ringo's, but the wee guy who worked in it was deaf, so he had to rely on lip-reading to get the orders right. Can you imagine how the tr- imagine the trouble he had trying to read orders from people who were drunk? Imagine if you were drunk, you go, How are you going to read that? Yeah. And a fellow's lips. I mean, how do you read that? But he did it. Ken's Burgers ran ads on the radio at the time claiming to sell 10,000 burgers a week, which is fine until apparently the Inland Revenue heard the... <laughs> I got the calculator out and Ken's was doomed. Continue on. But do you remember the chippy that the show bands used here in, in Derry? The, uh, the, do you remember the, what one? Come on. Cassonis. At the end of the bridge. Yes. That's right. A, was a was that Cassonis? Yes. A person used to walk over there across the bridge. That was the parade. All the women walked across the bridge. You walked across. And if you had any money, you'd go in there and get a half a supper. But the show bands came there late at night. They did indeed. Mm-hmm. I made there's a, there's, mind there's recently, a call for you on one. Thank you. A mate of mine recently admitted to being addicted to brake fluid. When I quizzed him on it, he said he could stop any time. <laughs> <I'll look laughs> <at that. laughs> That's not bad. If we, were, if we were in full health, we would laugh at that. <clears throat> a new Middle East crisis erupted last night as Dubai Television was refused permission to broadcast the Flintstones. I want you to give me the give me the punchline of this joke. A spokesman for the channel said a claim was made that people in Dubai would not understand the humour, but we know for a fact that people in Abu Dhabi do. Dabba, 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 <laughs> do. Uh... You were very slow there. You're yeah. not yourself. Yeah. I told you. I started a new job in Seoul last week. I thought it was a good career move. I was driving this morning when I saw an RUC, an R, uh, sorry, an RAC van packed up. Uh, parked up. The driver was sobbing uncontrollably and looking very miserable. I thought to myself, that guy's heading for a breakdown. Oh. <laughs> You're very slow today. You're not yourself. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you go away. I'll try you again. Now, you have to get this one. Who's that okay. on the line making a noise? Never mind. Here's one. Right. I was at a cash point the other day when a lady, an, old, an old lady asked if I could check her balance, so I pushed her over. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. No good. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry you had to listen to that. That's quite all right. I've listened to far worse in the back bar of Laveries, believe you me. Oh, you sound like a girl who's been to hell and back. Oh, I have. Tell me tell me what I can do for you today. Uh, it's more what... Can we start again? Start again, yes. Try and speak in English this time. Hello? Yes, Hello? 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 
Can you hear me? She's gone. I can hear you. The forecasting ability of Geordie Tuft has been doubted many times by the presenter, who no longer consults the rural sage when booking holidays. But it does look like Geordie's look may be changing. Have you seen the paper today? No. Geordie has been on this programme, and I think he was on uh, during the course of... Well, during you, well, whilst you were here. And he said uh, continually uh, that there was going to be an Indian summer. Yes. And we did. didn't believe him. Uh-huh. And uh, poo-pooed him. Yes. And indeed treated him with some disdain. And in all the papers today, they are saying that there will be an Indian summer. Yes. And it's going to begin basically today. Yeah. Right? And the weather shall be 15 degrees above the normal temperature, probably right up until next week. So that, in my mind, constitutes an Indian summer. So I think we owe Geordie an apology. Uh, uh, less uh, the we, Kimo Sabi. I owe Geordie an apology. Yes. Now, uh, this Wednesday, do you know what's happening this Wednesday? Probably Sam's on one, by the way. I don't know what's happening this Wednesday. This uh, Wednesday? Ash Wednesday? Is it Ash Wednesday? I don't know. It's not Ash Wednesday. I don't know. I just, <laughs> just what, what happens on a Wednesday? Nothing happens on a I Wednesday. I don't know. I'm just, about to ha- I'm just about to tell you what's going to happen on Wednesday. You're not yourself. Right. You're not yourself. I only have one a year. I know. That's what's wrong with you. Wednesday is not Ash Wednesday. It's not Black Wednesday. It is Bald Wednesday. For the purposes of a landmark television project, the presenter awaits listeners' stories, advice, and true tales of coping with hair loss. Already, practical help is flooding in. The principle of reflexology is that the nerve endings in your feet and hands relate to all body systems, and the nerve endings for the scalp are in the tips of the toes and the fingertips. Did you know that? No. So to stimulate the scalp and help promote hair growth, rub your fingernails of both hands together for a couple of minutes each day. It's as simple as that. Why don't you give it a go? Tell the way I can't do that. Because you have no nails. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what I... I Just why I've had nails and hair. That's why, I I have, that's, why I have no, that's why I'm going baldy, because we have no nails. What do you do? Tell me that again. You do that there. I'm miming it now. Right, I'm doing it now and the microphone. I used to do it a couple of minutes each day. The hair's just not click, click your nails like that? No, you just rub your nails against each other. I see don't all the believe fingers, you. See all the fingers, yeah. Because the nerve endings of your nails are connected to the nerve endings. So this lady here, but the nerve endings of the scalp and the tips of the toes and the fingernails. But how do you rub your toenails together? Hold on a second, I'll just read this again. <laughs> hands, no, it says hands it's together. Hands. hands together, the, rub the fingernails of both hands together for a couple of minutes each day. It's as simple as that, why don't you give it a go? I'm doing it. That's Patricia Sterling says that. A couple of minutes each day, will you do it? But then again, how will you know the difference? Because you're not too bad. No, I'm You're just right. going bald around the sides. Yeah. No. What, what? Anyway, we encourage people to give us a ring on Wednesday. Not today. Give us a ring on Wednesday and we want to talk about this. You know, it doesn't have to be a serious thing, whichever one way or the other. How do you feel about that? <laughs> have you had any experiences? Do you remember years ago, you used to go, about 10 years ago, you used to, be able, you used to go on a plane. Stop doing that. You told me to do it for a couple of minutes. You look like a chipmunk. Stop oh, that. My hair's growing. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, do you see any sign of hair growth there? It's not as quick as... Uh, do you? <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. Well, anyway, the point is, you know, there are, I, was, I forget now what I was going to say. Um, no, yeah, remember years ago... Uh, <laughs> on an aeroplane. On an aeroplane, you would often see this. Uh, I, I suppose maybe... Do you know when you would see that? Do you see that in transatlantic flights more than well, anything? See yeah. what? Will you wait until I get round to it? Don't be so fussy and picky. I'm saying that every once in a while, do you know when you look down an air, uh, uh, an aeroplane, uh, all you see the top of people's heads, right? It's the same in the bus. I know, but when I'm do you not... have to go on an aeroplane? I'm explaining it. I'm explaining it. Uh, especially in transatlantic, transatlantic flights, because uh, generally the people who travel in transatlantic flights on regular scheduled flights are people who've got a few pounds, right? Not, I'm not talking about chartered, not talking about continental, anything like that. People who normally travel on trans- transatlantic flights usually got a few quid about them. So you're more liable to see this. So if you were looking down at the tops of the heads of people, every once in a while you'd see a man's baldy head that looked as if he'd been uh, shot by buckshot. Have you seen that? That is a, 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 a hair transplant that has gone wrong. Oh. See, about 10 or 15 years ago, people used to try hair transplants and sometimes they wouldn't take. You see, so you'd get a man whose scalp is peppered with little holes mm-hmm. and he, there's no way you can hide that unless you wear a cap there. You're right. And you can't be wearing a cap on an aeroplane because people think you're funny looking. On the subject of baldness, the presenter in a certain light could be mistaken for a man whose hair has lost some of its lusciousness and indeed luster. Mr. Coyle has picked up on this with a startling lack of diplomacy. How close did you get to buying a wig? 
I never needed one. Yeah, but you often talk. You have this thing about your hair. I have not. About your lack of hair. You I have, have not. Yes. When did All I have is a little skylight at the back. Well, did you ever think? No. Of, did you ever stop at a wig shop and look in the window? A wig shop? Wherever. Wherever you buy wigs. You don't, you don't look in the window at wigs. It's always upstairs. Well, did you ever walk in and let on no. you're looking for someone? No. Never. I never considered that. All I have, I have a little scarcity around the back. A little skylight. The skylight window is a little open, but mm. that's all right. I've Are you getting that blocked up? I'm not saying anything. You see, look at me from the front. I'm fine from the front. It's all right, yeah. I'm all right from yeah, the you front. Uh, you're all right with headphones on you. <laughs> Where do you think I wear them? <laughs> Where do you think I wear the oh. headphones? Who's oh. on? Now, Wednesday, people, stories So about what? You want a man, to, a man to sit in the house saying... I, I, I want people I, to tell I've me I've been about wearing the... a wig for no, 14 years. No. I want to take it off. Oh, OK, if he wants to, yes. And if, we, if people have gone uh, to hair clinics and didn't work and men, men told them lies or whatever, people have been fooled into thinking there was a cure for male pattern baldness, which is what most people have, which is incurable, unless you get a transplant. You can't make your hair grow again if your gene switches off. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, you know, anybody who's had an experience, anybody who's got a comb over, which looks as if you'll have to get one soon, uh, anybody that wants to talk anything at all about hair. Wayne or, Rooney, do you want to? Wayne, Wayne Rooney, I would say, now, it looks to me, and I don't know, and I'm saying this without prejudice, it looks to me as I don't think he went to the right guy because he's gone grey already. Have you noticed that? Maybe he went to an older man. <laughs> Radio Ulster listeners are known the world over for their wit, wisdom and way with words. Unfortunately, the presenter has encountered the one listener who displays none of these skills. I have a few local names here in the province. Yes. Right. This is the next one. Colerain. Yes. Go on, song. Song. Colerain. Yes. Uh, Colerain, Colerain. No, I can't think. Right, come on. You're dragging it out too much. Come all on. right. What? Cold rain drops keep falling on my head. Uh, all right, OK. Right. Right, any more? Pour it down. Pour it, pour, pour, put that, that is cool. Put, put that, pour it down, boy. Put that, uh, put it down. What is it? Pour it down, down, deeper and down. Ah, stop. That's so obvious. All right, here. We'll see. Can you get this one? All right. You should have said, put that, pour it down, boy. Put right, that, pour that'll it. do. Yes? Here's one. Coal Island. Coal Island. Uh, Coal Island in the stream. Ah, very good. Actually, I know, I know how you work. If anybody can do that. Right. What you should do is get a song title that sounds like Coal Island, but it's not exactly like it. Do you oh, know a child could do that. All oh, like, right. Oh, like, well, then, I'm not bother giving you any more. Well, come on, give me more then to see how childish you could get. Come on. All right, right then. Right. There's a wee village between Castle Derg and Edirne. What's it called? Killin. Killin' me softly with his song. Easy, are I mean, how easy is that? All right. Oma. Mo- Oma. Oh, my papa. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> to me, Mal- he was, yes? Malail. Malail? Aye. Uh, Malaila uh, Malita. No, Malail of Ma- Free. Ah, for God's sake. That's so... All right, here's one. Cookstown. Cookstown. Uh, Cookstown I love so well. Very good. Now, you're too smart. <laughs> you're too far too smart. No, you don't need to be smart. That's the point uh, I'm saying to you. Well, here's one here now. What? That's a song. Got myself a crying, talking, sleeping, walking. Uh, Limassol. Antrim Coast. <laughs> um, Cushendall. Uh, right, OK. Thank you for listening. Back tomorrow.